and all our days. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I hear words, and yesterday I don't speak Yoruba, but yesterday I kept hearing a word. And I asked for the meaning, and it means we make up. And you know, we're going to declare that the Lord is our way maker, even this day. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. The Lord is our own Olulana. Sorry if I can't pronounce it properly, but He is our way maker. We declare that the Lord Yahweh, you are to speak the peace of the Lord over our families, over our children. We, we just bless them this day, finally, as we pray. In the name of Jesus, call the names of the children, call the names of children who are connected to you. We bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, Lord, by your name, give you all glory. Thank you, Father. Good morning, all. Thank you, Anna, for that session of declarations. Thank you for. Um, Staring up the light of sonship, the light of the Lord spreading out across the nations of the world. Even as we proclaim the shalom of God over nations, over congregations, over assemblies, over territories, I will proclaim shalom Jerusalem, shalom Israel. So blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But the peace, the peace shall know no bounds. The one as it has been declared of the increase of the government, of his government, and of peace, there shall be no end. We will declare and declare the peace of the Lord spreading across the nations of the world. And we proclaim shalom over the city of our king, over Zion. And we say of the increase of his peace, of the increase of his government, there shall be no end, not in this city, not in your life, because wherever you are, you are a representation of that mystery because of the mystic union by which you are connected with him and to him. For we are bound together as one. For we are in him, he is in us, we are one. So we declare and declare that the peace of Yahweh the peace of Yeshua will spread across and will rain down the glory drops upon our lives in every place where we are in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. All right. So this one, I just want to make it brief, just a short one. I want to be trying to, at least whenever I can, um, 
will just do a short one. I always have to eat, but I also don't want to disrupt the flow of what we are doing, the 30 minutes declaration. So when I can, I'll come in earlier, then do 30 minutes, and the person will take over. But most of the time, it's like, it's about this time that I can come up. So this one, I just want to share on, you know, a brief expression. Let me make a confession. I woke up this morning and I said to the Lord, Lord, I, I feel so empty. I need to just, <clears throat> I just need a visitation. I need a refill. I need an encounter and all of that. And the Lord said to me, so I actually didn't want to appear at all. Maybe just to say, to do greetings and I leave. But Lord said, go, I will speak through you. So as I start here listening to the declaration and joining the declaration, the Lord said, son, I want to unveil the, wow. There's a main mystery of the song that <clears throat> the Lord said he wants to unveil. So I'm just gonna speak as one who is truly empty, but just allowing God to speak as he wants to speak. I just want to open myself to him. And it's just like a host connected to a rushing fountain and let the, fountain, let the water from the fountain just flow and water the plants, water the garden and all of that. I'm right here facing, you know, um, trees, see olive plants, and I see um, a pool and all of that. <clears throat> and there's a fellowship then right in front of me is a mini garden with little flowers. And I just could sense a presence. Something happened this day when we went to, they call it the Church of um, Agony. That was the Garden of Gethsemane. That was where Jesus prayed and agonized. And whilst there, I'm going to send the video later. Now, I didn't just, this trip, if I'm joining in the um, in the tour, initially when I wanted to come to Israel, I didn't want to go for any tour. I just wanted to come to just dwell in God's presence. The, 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 I was more interested in the conference, but even within the conference, I just wanted a personal time with the Lord. But from the airport, we went straight on tour. And uh, so I made up my mind that I wasn't going to see what it was seen. I was just going to see something different. And that was what I just kept on it was, It has been a series of encounters, right? Quite tiring, but a series of encounters. Tiring to the body. The body is being broken, but the spirit is coming alive. So I got, we got into, as soon as we entered into the garden, the, the, the the energy, the presence. So the same question kept coming to people. I was like, man, why are you not smiling? <laughs> and I just looked at them. So you guys don't know. You guys don't know what you guys came here to do. You, you think you came, you, came, you came here for sightseeing? No. I wish you guys would be able to connect with the life that God wants us to connect with. You know, the, the crusaders are making a great deal of money from all of this um, tourism and all of that. But we discovered that the Christian crusaders are the ones who are championing all of these things, making, making sites and projecting those sites as places where Jesus could have been, this could have happened, that could have happened, it's something they call the 14 stations and all of that. However, I discovered that none of them have been able to break into, break beyond all of those historical sites to break into the mystic, the mysteries 
that were unveiled as Christ walked the face of the earth. Which is what we are, if we break into that, we begin to walk in the reality of those things. And guess what? I don't have to, like I was telling, I was telling um, Apostle Pat, this is my roommate. I was telling him, I said, for me, I have, most of the places we visited, right? I have I discovered that I get to those places. Maybe that's what is helping me to connect. And I want to say something this morning. As I speak this morning, I pray that some of you will be able to connect to the life of what I'm speaking. I'm not quite a number of people desire to come to Israel. Guess what? I discovered that by coming here, what is giving me the leverage, what I'm leveraging on to give me insight into what I should look out for, actually uh, is actually because of my, my previous visits. This is my first time visiting Israel physically, but I discovered that places that we are going, there are places that we we'll go to, right? I just hang around, but there was a place we went to. I didn't even bother going into to see what they were seeing. Why? Because I've been there severally. Then there were places that we we'll go to. I know that there was really nothing there. So the Lord will say, no, nothing. So places that caught my interest and where I had encounters were places I've been visiting regularly in the spirit. So I knew just where to go. I knew what to see. I knew what to touch. I knew what to do. And like when we got into the kind of the sermon, I didn't need to go like people go touch the stone, kiss the stone and all of that. No, I didn't need to do that. The reason is the presence in that place. Having been there several days, the first time I was there was when I read the final quest. And that was uh, in 19, I think in 19, 1999, thereabout. You know, I read that book and I found myself, uh, I have learned to, to by contemplative meditation to enter into not just the reader's mind, but the spirit of the book, the spirit. I, I don't just read books as letters, but I read them connecting with the life and the spirit of what I'm reading. So in connecting it with it, I, I was able to flow. And I found myself journeying and I had the experiences that were described in that book. So I got to that stone by the spirit and I found myself kneeling with rejoiner. And the experience that he was having, I was also having in my body. When he would lay on that stone, I was also find myself laying on that stone. And within not up to a minute, he would jump out. The pain, the agony. And that was when I got to know that the reason Jesus agonized so much and prayed that prayer, if it be thy will, O oh Lord, let this cup pass over me was not because he did not know that it was his purpose. It was the, it was the, the, the high point of his purpose. But I was now able to go further. That was actually after my after that particular my initial experience. We just felt the pain, but I had to go back there because I needed to know why he had to go through such pain. And you know, before then I was praying this prayer. Lord, that I may be a partaker of your suffering. I may be a partaker of your suffering that I might also experience the joy that you experienced when you resurrected. That feeling is coming back. So you see, from then on, every time I pray that prayer, it's a whole lot of difference in my life. So, as I, I went back again, I said, Lord, I need to go further than this. I want to experience, what did you see? What did you feel? That you agonized so much. 
And by my third visit, I broke into it. That was when the Lord led me. That was when I got to know that what he was agonizing for was the time, that brief moment. He entered into the separation. Do you know what I realized in recent time? That God never, the Father never forsook the Son. The Father never forsook the Son. And that was why, you see, Jesus, he spoke about the prodigal son. When the prodigal son left the father, the father's heart never left the son. Wherever the son went, wherever the son was, whatever the son did, the father's heart was connected with the son. There was a mystic union that could not, there was a bond. The bond of the father manifested in the son could not be broken. It was never broken. So, even on the cross, when he said, My father, my father, why has that forsaken me? No, the father never forsook. It was the presence of sin. Having carried the body and the, 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 the thing of sin, it awakened the consciousness of separation, just like. When Adam, when we say that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord, that glory for a moment. So it awakened a consciousness of separation, a consciousness of God not being around. That was why Adam in the garden had to clothe himself with an eternity. Because the lost consciousness but if you notice, when, G, when God came and the Father came, said, Adam, Adam, where are you? When he said that we are naked, he said, who told you you are naked? Have you eaten of the food? Because that would awaken a, con a false con consciousness, I mean, a consciousness of falsehood that you are naked. But the Lord never withdrew anything from us. But we began to see from a darkened glass. So I entered into that realm, and when I entered into the garden yesterday, the, all that feeling came back again that I had experienced years back. It came back again. What was Jesus agonizing? He began to see, he entered. He was transported into a realm. He saw the death of the separation. How men were completely lost in the realms of deception. So he was expressing sonship. It was a mystic expression of the sun. Who knows the mind of the Father? Who understood the love of God? And he was seeing how sons, how the children, how they were far. And he grieved. And when he saw that and he knew what brought about that consciousness, That consciousness are now manifested on the cross. When he said, my father, my father, why has that forsaken me? That consciousness, he, he, he saw everything. Just like I said, I have, been, I have visited several before this visit. So Jesus was in the place of that Awaken consciousness of separation. 
before he got into it. And the pain, the agony. Lord, if this pain can be taken off, nevertheless, if I must drink, must go through this process, then not my will, but your will be done. Brethren, honestly, that there are expressions of sonship that you experience in your body. You, there are expressions of sonship that we go through from time to time. When the son begins to express himself in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our relationships. The joyful one is when the son expresses his joy, his love in us. You, what it does was also every type of expressions the son expresses to us and in us, it releases a fragrance into the atmosphere. And everything is embedded and grounded in love. It was for the love of the brethren. Have you seen your child in pain? Or have you seen somebody you love, somebody you care for so much in pain? And I have been in a situation where I wish I could trust. I remember when my wife was in pain one time. I, I, I wished I could carry that pain. And that was the situation I was when I had to pray through the night. And by morning, she was okay. So you see, expressions of sonship manifest in such unique and powerful way that every time the son expresses himself, you see, you, you see results and encounters are always the results. manifestations. You see the expressions of life. What I'm sharing today, I'm praying that the path will be open for you. Where you will begin to enter into realms of meditations. Where you begin to contemplate on the word of God that as you study, as you read the word of God, that, that, because the word of God is actually a portal that you will see, you will discern, you will know the portal that is open to you by that word that you are reading, that you are studying, and it will grant you access into the mystic realms of the expression of the Son of God, who is also known as the Son of Man. The one who is called the seed of Abraham, the root of David, the rod of Jesus, the prince of peace, the apostle and the high priest of our profession, the apostle, the apostle, that's talking about the beginning, the foundation. He is the foundation of our priesthood. He is the foundation of the very life that we breathe, that we drink. He is our everything. I'm speaking this morning and I release by the grace of God that every one of us listening on this.
listen to this good brother. And you'll be able to go into this good union. And uh, you begin to express, you begin to find yourself expressed by union, by knowledge. So that you, the sonship will be expressed in you and through you. For your destiny is to be Christ. Your destiny is not necessarily to make heaven because you're already in heaven. Your destiny is to be everything that he is. So I pray this morning that you will break into that realm. You will find expression and the glory of God will be strongly manifested in your life. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. As you step out today, as you go into places, I pray that the sun will find expression in you, will find expression through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. I love you. And I appreciate you. Hopefully, I'm trying to see where we can make up where we can make our time we start learning meditations we learn the foundation then we also learn the advance then get into contemplative meditation so that you begin to assess realms and break into heights you will yeah, you will literally 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 have every experience that you are studying in your in scriptures. It will be very literal. S such that sometimes the scriptures will come so alive because you are in need. You will find that everything Christ did that you are reading, you will find yourself doing them also in that room. The Lord bless you and keep going to write. Have a wonderful day. I love you all from the city of our King, Jerusalem, and the plain. Shalom. Look at all.